Way too slow. These are the Diacro rod parters. We have the number one here, the old number one, that they don't make anymore. We have the larger number two also. I got this little one by accident in a pallet of Diacro benders. We got a bunch of benders, like the 1A, 1, 2, and 3 benders. So in that couple of pallets, there was some other stuff. This guy was really dirty, stacked up next to an old uh, spring winder and some other stuff like that. Once I got this cleaned up a little bit and working and used it, I realized that I liked it so much that I hunted down the larger one to have larger capacity. So this one does small wire from, I think it's 1 16th up to about 3 8 and they're about 2200 bucks. So it's not an impulse buy for most of us. You can usually find one used for about half that. They have different die sets. You can get a die ring that is all one size. So there's like 10 holes of quarter inch or one eighth or whatever you want. That would be for larger volume production. This I believe is the standard die set where it goes in a spiral from the small holes up to the large holes to get the range that you would want to have in a general machine shop or fabrication situation. The real key and the purpose for these is burr free cutting. So they're very fast action and they create a cut that does not leave any burr on the end. It is a little bit sharp sometimes, but what it does is it reduces, it kind of crimps down the end so it's tapered ever so slightly to make it so that it doesn't make the diameter larger than the rod itself was. One important thing to remember is to not cut hard materials with these. So no spring steel, I would not really do much stainless, or if you do, be careful what the hardness is. It's made for softer materials cold roll steels, brass, aluminum, plastics, things like that. Kind of think of it as uh, whatever you would cut with a high speed end mill is kind of the only things that you'd want to put through this machine. If you do have other people in the shop or people that may not be careful about adhering to that, I would probably lock out the machine so that it doesn't get abused. Because once you just cut one piece of spring steel in this, you're gonna mess up the die and then every other piece you cut after that's gonna have a ding in it. This is really like a very base first process. First operation machine is just grab a piece of stock off the rack cut it a little bit oversized in this and then machine it afterwards or bend it or do whatever you're gonna do it's way faster than cutting on a saw you know a horizontal band saw would cut the same stock pretty reliably or you could use a jeweler saw or something like that for the small ones or a cutoff wheel but as you can see how fast it is to cut parts really accurately and really fast that I have seen yet in my 20 plus years of doing metal working. So let's start with this. It's actually welding rod. This is a pretty tiny one, the 1 32nd of an inch, I think. And we're gonna start on the smallest hole here just to show you the range of sizes you can do. And it does give a nice edge on small stuff as well as large stuff. Slide it through the hole, you pull the handle, it shears off that piece of rod right on the center line of the machine. A nice clean cut on your round stock and you can set up a stop to cut whatever length you want. This machine has a pretty big capacity for being a small piece of cast iron with a big handle. This one will do up to 5 8 diameter. So yeah, 625 is the biggest you can do with this particular set of dies. This is a common thing, hot rolled steel. It's kind of like iron fence fabricating material. This is quarter inch. Pick the size that fits it the best, the smaller the better, and then you can set your length, pull the handle, and it will shear it off. This material is so soft, it doesn't even make a noise. Completely silent, it kind of feels like you're cutting a stiff piece of Play-Doh. 
the closer you can get to the diameter of the rod, the better the finish is gonna be. So here we have, this is a piece of better material. This is probably 1018, it's cold roll. And it's quarter inch also. A little bit harder, you can hear it cut that time and see you get a much better uh, finish with less distortion on that. So let's take this one over to the lathe and I'll show you one of the benefits of this is that it will slip right into a collet like the 5C collet. So you won't get any of that um, jamming that you would get when you cut off something on the saw and it has burrs all the way around it that you can't get into the collet. This will uh, just slide right in. So this guy here we just cut on the parter. This is quarter inch material. Now you can just slide it in there very easily without any resistance because the, the end of the rod is slightly tapered from that uh, shearing action that the machine did. So you get uh, a nice intro into the collet so there's no resistance. And you can just stick it in there, tighten it up, and then you're good to do your operation. That's an example of second operation. You're just uh, facing it or milling it or whatever you need to do. It's even better than the turned edge has more of a burr on it than the sheared edge does. Let's try another piece. This is a piece of Delrin plastic and we'll see what this does. It's got a nice fit in that uh, hole here. You can hear it click and it's a little sticky in there. It did cut it, not super ideally, but for some materials this might be handy. You could always, of course, uh, do a parting operation on a lathe. If you have a CNC lathe or the bar feeder, you would probably be just cutting these off as you finish parts and moving on to the next one, so you wouldn't need to do this. But for a lot of welding and fabrication stuff where you're going to be doing it uh, assembly and, and welding by hand, then this is a great way to cut it. So here's a piece of aluminum. What is this? This is half inch. And this is kind of a hard material, so you can hear it shear. And it gives you a pretty dramatic break on the face there, which is interesting. You can actually see the stress changing the break where it's very compressed on the outside and then it has a very broken texture to the material in the middle. This is uh, more of that uh, mild steel rod. This might be a little thick for having it, the machine clamped to the table, but we'll give it a try. Nope, didn't even cut it. Yeah, it doesn't fit. This gives you a look at the action. This material was too large to fit in the tight tolerance of the hole that it's supposed to fit in, so I went to the next size up, which you kind of don't want to do if you can avoid it, but you can see where it started to shear. So you have one die pushing this way and another die pushing this way, trying to separate them. So this, you can see part of the process where it actually did start to do it, but the force wasn't enough to go all the way through the material. Just for fun, let's do a piece of hex brass and see what kind of behavior it does outside the edges of that. It's kind of hard, brittle, so it does a good snap. It does compress the points on the hex a little bit. So then let's take a look at the little one here, the number one. So we got the spring stop attachment set up. And this is a pretty ingenious little thing. It took me a little while to dig all the parts for this out of the box and figure out how it went together. So let me show you on this piece of welding rod here. This is ER70S rod. And I'm just gonna cut it first to get past the, uh, the stamp here because this part is larger and won't fit in the good die size. So I'm gonna go up to the next one just cut it off here to get that out of the way. And then we can move back to the correct size here. And this little stop is quite amazing. Whoever designed this, um, I'm very impressed. Very simple, very reliable, easy to use, very precise. Literally, all you have to do is push on the material going in and pull the handle and it will cut 
as many pieces as you want within about a five thou range is what I found. When you push the material against it, the spring pushes the block over to a stop and then you pull the handle to cut it off. The die rotating moves the stock forward and allows that stop to pop back. So now it's back to the beginning of its spring range, right? So then when you push the handle back on the machine, that lip catches the material and when you push the bar in farther, it pops the part out while also giving you that stop back to set the next part on. So you literally just have to push on your stock I-51, I-53, I-56, I-58, I-49, so about 10 thou overall. So I've really been enjoying these machines. I do appreciate what it feels like to cut the material. That's kind of a repeating theme for me as I like to experience as close as I can what is going on with the material when it cuts. I'm fascinated by being able to set up a milling operation and have it cut a really thick piece of steel with a cutter and have it be almost completely silent while it's removing a lot of material. To me, that is fascinating. It's, it's endlessly fascinating. So a machine like this is also fascinating to me because I actually get to feel what's going on. You get to feel when the dies reach the material. You get to feel the resistance of the material as it's starting to pierce the diameter. And then you get to feel the moment when the core actually gives up and shears off. And there's just something intrinsically pleasurable about that experience. I like it with milling, shearing, turning. I think it's for me one of the more fascinating aspects of doing metalworking. And these machines, like I said, are available used. If you're really interested in one, I would just suggest hunting until you find one. They're a little bit hard to find, but if you maybe set up a saved search on eBay that will give you a notification whenever anyone pops up, then you have a better chance of getting one or searching around locally for you know shops that are selling equipment or maybe go to an auction and if you're buying pallets of stuff, then you'll get some very interesting stuff in there that you may just be very pleasantly surprised with. So I'm excited to have these set up. Obviously, I have a little bit of work to do. We have a clamp holding this uh, stop on, but I need to make or get another one of these for the other parter. They'll be enrolled in our daily use, our arsenal of daily used machines. <laughs>